Welcome to session three. Well, last time we learned a little bit about who you are and your personal strengths. Today, we're going to talk about the spiritual gifts. What is it that God is giving you as maybe a special gift, a special opportunity, a special ability. We call those spiritual gifts. And all of these things, the personality, your spiritual gift, uh, what you love to do, what you're able to do, all of this is going to help us map out who you are with your ministry action plan. Uh, one of these six uh opportunities and characteristics uh, are who you are. And we're going to help you find that out uh, as we love you uh, to move forward on your journey uh, with Christ. So welcome to session three. Well, let's just dive in as we talk a little bit about spiritual gifts. Now, I hope that you've already taken the assessment and that you have uh, you finished that and I would have received that. And so this is going to help you understand a little bit more about spiritual gifts. Well, the word comes from charis, which uh, means grace, and grace is something that is undeserved. We don't deserve the spiritual gifts we get. We also don't deserve the grace that we receive because of our decision uh, to follow Jesus and to be a follower of Jesus uh, because uh, we have chosen to believe what he did for us that we could not do on our own. So uh, it comes out of this, it's called grace gifts. And this charis is, it's something that is undeserved and we, we don't necessarily deserve it. But what is a spiritual gift? Well, basically it is something you receive because of your faith decision in Jesus. And this is very important. Uh, you can have an ability, uh, but do you have a spiritual gift? And these things sometimes work together and sometimes they're different. Uh, and we need to understand that. When you came to a knowledge that you could not fix your spiritual life, that you needed to choose Jesus who died on the cross for you, that's a faith decision. I'm putting my faith in what Jesus did instead of what I think I can do. And so I, I've chosen to believe by faith that Jesus died on the cross for me. Uh, he was buried, he rose again, and he's coming back. And I choose to believe uh, and accept the grace uh, of God so that all of my sin has been uh, forgiven and that I have this relationship now as I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So at that moment uh, that the Holy Spirit, uh, you enter in that moment of relationship, you are given a spiritual gift. Uh, and I know there's been a lot made about that. Sometimes I think people make too much out of it. Uh, so I'm you, but I am using it as a part of your ministry action plan, not the whole ministry action plan. Because what's the purpose of them? Why do you have them? Well, that's to encourage somebody, to serve somebody, to guide somebody, or maybe to comfort. The big word there is console. I'm consoling you. I'm comforting you. I'm coming to your aid. Uh, and I'm helping you. Uh, we're going to talk about experiences in a in a later session, uh, and that's where those come into play. But the reason you have the spiritual gifts is so that you uh, you can do one of these four things. Can I encourage, serve, guide, or console somebody else? Um, you know, as a result of your faith, the Holy Spirit provided you these gifts, uh, and that's why we have them. Well, every church is unique. Uh, I know sometimes we may think, well, every church is the same. Well, it's not really because every church is made up of a certain set of people. And that set of people have been given certain gifts uh, to accomplish the tasks that God wants that church to, to accomplish. And you uh, and your, your church have the same thing where your attending church needs you. They, they need you because you have a spiritual gift that God has given, and he's put you where you're attending church because they need you. Now, sometimes they may not know they need you, but they do. They need you. And maybe you don't think you are needed, but you are. And we need you to engage with this gift. When you look through the New Testament as the church was being developed and was starting, we see in three particular churches, a different set of gifts. Uh, some were the same and some were different. If you looked in Romans chapter 12, 
or Corinthians chapter 12 or Ephesus or Ephesians chapter 4, you're going to find lists of gifts. Some are unique to that church. Uh, some uh, are similar as at other churches, which is true. But the makeup of the gifts are exactly what God wants that church to have to accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. But if you're not using your gift, the church can't do what it's supposed to do. Or if the church isn't recognizing that you have an op this gift and this ability to, to use it, they're not going to accomplish everything that they need to be accomplishing. So I want you to know that you are wanted and needed and valued and respected because you're important. You're important as a part of the body. In, in Romans and Corinthians, they talk about this metaphor of the body, that you have eyes and hands and feet and heads and all these, and you need all of those things, or you're not really a complete body. And the church is the same way. We need all of you serving in all of these different ways in order for us to be the complete body that God wants us to be. And so it's exciting to figure out what your plan is. And I am very excited to help you figure out what your ministry action plan is. So here's uh, some of your homework uh, that I want you to do. Uh, before you come to the next session, I need you to click uh, down below uh, in the abilities uh, and passions link. Uh, and I need you to finish that form before watching the next session. As we wrap up a little bit here uh, today uh, in this session, uh, everybody has various gifts. And each of us have a responsibility to know that and to use that. That's why we're learning our ministry action plan. Every one of these has a practical use in the local church. It's the power of the Spirit that enables the practice of these gifts so that we can produce fruit. This is what Jesus wants us to do, to produce fruit. So I want to help you do that. I'll see you in our next session together.